Um, of course, this discussion is in much more detail in the How to Hack Your Pet series that's available on my channel, so please make sure you keep an eye out on that where I discuss all of these in a lot of detail. But I think this actual lesson is also going to be helpful because I'm going to show you a couple of practical examples for you to have a look at. But you have seen the actual pace setter and we are currently by the adjustment on our dates. But before we're going to talk about the floor plan of today. All right. Um, of course, have a look at the pay setter for the bigger scope of things. But let's now at the working drawings part where the drawings that you are preparing people must be at such a quality that the contractor will be able to draw this conference center that you've designed. Let's look at the introduction. The draw, draw a detailed layout drawing of the selected fee and solution of the complete building. So the complete building must be shown in these drawings, clearly showing all the required building features, including the drive-through area. They're not referring to parking base, it's only the drive-through area, the undercover drive-through where you can see two cars passing by each other. That must be included in that. Now the first part here is 4.1.1 that we are drawing now. It is a complete floor plan drawn to a suitable scale but preferably not smaller than scale 1 to 75. Now, I have a little bit of a problem with this scale, and you can try it out yourself. You've done your freehand drawings now. Um, and if you look at the examples that I've given you, this now is, for instance, one from uh, last year. Of course, this wasn't a conference center. But you'll see here, if we include a border, the lender did not do the full civil title panel on this just for the sake of um, space and I really want to urge you to not important is you have to remember you have to draw the entire floor plan plus you have to leave space all the way around for your detailed measurements you still have to keep notes you still have to do your sewer there's a lot that goes onto this page okay I'm guessing depending on your design here a uh, scale 1 to 75 for some of you might be a little bit challenging to fit that on let's say you've got a very long building for instance um, you know if it doesn't fit on then you'll have to change the scale so they they suggest 1 to 75 um, 1 to 100 these drawings have been done to scale 1 to 100 the only thing with the scale 1 to 100 you really have to pay detail when doing your when uh, door frames for instance or your window detail or details fixture or fixtures if it's not drawn neatly and accurately we're going to lose some of the detail and for instance in your door frame we want to see the step in that door frame etc that's why they prefer a scale 1 to 75 it makes it easier for you to draw but if 1 to 75 doesn't fit on your paper because of the size of your bu building or the layout of your building of course then you can make a change to that so 1 to 100 is still accepted, but then you have to make sure, and I'll zoom in here on this detail so that you can see. This child did scale 1 to 100, but look at there. Even in the door frames, I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing the door frame details here. Your wasp patient details, the window, um, the different fixtures, the swing of the doors. Even though it's 1 to 100, make sure then you still complete all of those requirements. Where scale 1 to 75, of course, is going to make it easier. Um, I'll remind you now how the scale works. Um, before we actually look at the detail of this floor plan, um, let's continue with what is required. So, the complete floor plan, a suitable scale, that one you're going to determine yourself in, and depending on your layout, they prefer a 1 to 75, a 1 to 100 would also be fine. I think those are probably the only two options for you. 1 to 50 is going to be too big for your page. Then you can 5.1.1, 2, and 3, it's different drawings but what do they want you they want you to include the following on all relevant views or all relevant drawings so this is specific to the floor plan you have to show all exterior features so in sense in case you have um, the drive-through and there's the outdoor light in that drive-through that's the external feature you have to include all doors and window detail right on this floor plan um, all window and door frames must be shown in the two elevations. That's when you get to the actual two elevations. The roof detail needs to be shown in this floor plan, including rainwater items and roof lines. So if you look here, um, there's the roof line indicated on this floor plan. That's what they're referring to. 
Okay, external features, those outdoor lights, for instance. The um, and this was of course a different design, but the outdoor walkway, um, the rainwater items that was all indicated for you. Remember that all rainwater items um, on and roof lines, all permanent fixtures. That's your basins, your built-in cupboards. Uh, please, no movable furniture like desks and chairs. We don't want you to draw that. All electrical fittings and wiring details. Look at that now. Wastewater disposable systems, the sewer, and the coloring here is going to be important. All title labels and notes is important. Your scales used, um, the detailed dimensioning is important. The cutting planes for your uh, section elevation, all hatching details, and your north point. Okay, that's all part that must be included in your floor plan. Also, of course, elevation, site plans, etc. Then if you look at your checklist, and this is where we're going to give you marks. You can see it counts out of 20 in total. If we zoom in here, let's just have a look at what. Does your eventual floor plan correlate with a selected freehand solution and the selection process summary? So that's important. Do you, the floor plan that you've drawn in the end, is it clear that there's a link between that and your uh, elevation of your freehand concepts and your selection process that you followed? Okay, so the revisions that you propose, for instance, is it included? If you had no revisions, then that floor plan must look exactly like the concept that you've chosen. That gives you two marks. All internal and external walls and roof lines, we're going to double check that. If you had all of them drawn, two marks. All doors, including the rotating door and windows, that's the swing of the doors, the door frames. Have you done all of that? Yes, two marks. All permanent fixtures in this conference center, and you, th you remember there's a serving hatch that's needed, or serving bay, there's the kitchen appliances, uh, the reception desk, all of that. Have you gotten the permanent fixtures in? Yes. All electrical fittings in a wiring detail, and in your actual design brief, they refer to the quality of your electrical fittings, so keep an eye out that that's going to be assessed. I'll show you some examples now. Wastewater disposal system, the sewer, is it indicated, and Correctly colored, um, title labels and notes, detailed dimension. You can't have any dimensions left out here. That builder can't ask what's the size or length of this wall. All of that must be included. If you include all dimensions and it's correctly done according to science, two out of two. Hatching detail, that's for the walls and the cutting plane. Is that included? Suitable scale selected and correctly indicated as well as your north pole. Okay, let's look at the actual examples here and remember again this is the example of previous year work so it's not the same design as yours but i want you to look at the different parts here so let's start on the top with our detailed dimensioning um, so the closer measurements that's the first ones and then the further measurements that's second and of course lastly is the overall measurement so just pay attention there I would even suggest that you can have a bit more spacing here. It feels a little bit cramped and there is still space on the top. So you can uh, extend that a little bit. Remember, we want to have the dimension lines drawn. We want to see the arrows and we want to see your measurement in millimeters. All right. And have a... Sorry. Have a... Um, time. Sorry for that flip. Let's flip it back. I hope that didn't mess up now. Glory. Okay. Okay, let's zoom back in. Sorry for that interruption. Okay. So let's look at the, continue looking at the dimensions there. All right. So all the dimensions. Um, you can also in your side notes, let's say for instance, you don't say the dimension of the outer wall or the internal wall. You can just in the side notes say outer wall, cavity wall, 270 or inner wall 110, not plastered, or whatever you want to do there, okay. Then your light fixtures, external wall light fixtures indicated, to a switch switches, if you have fluorescent tubes, specify the tubes, how many tubes, the wall inputs, how these connect to the different light, um, switches, um, all of that's going to be required, external um, lighting, then you have your roof line here. Of course, yours will look different than that, but make sure you insert your roof lines all the way through. If you have an overhang there. All right, in my community tab on YouTube, on How to EGD, in that community tab, if you scroll down through those posts, 
I've actually done roof lines for your drive through I've also done the um, rotating door. There's actual examples for you to look at. So please don't say I don't know how to draw a rotating door. It's given there. Okay. Then you have to have your cutting plane according to... You can add this cutting plane at the end once you've decided on your section elevation. So, But that's going to be part of it. Your hatching here is going to have to be part of it. Internal, internal and external doors. Make sure your reception desk is labeled. Make sure all... Um, your rooms are labeled with regards to uh, designation and, of course, finishing of the floor. Um, and then your north arrow correctly drawn. And let's just look at the sewer here. So your sewer, it's going to be in brown. You're going to have to have your inspection eyes. You're going to have to have uh, um, rotting eyes, direction to the existing manual. Uh, the fall of the sewer should be added in here. Um, Okay, that's quite straightforward. Um, then the, the different areas, and this you can get, of course, from your freehand sketches, but just to make sure that you're within the limited uh, available surface area for your conference center. All right, let's look at another example. Basically, the same. Um, Sewer lines indicated the center could have added um, inspection chamber, rotting eyes that was missed here. Um, but the standard of these floor plans are going to need to be to a high quality. Show you one more example. Okay, if you want yours to feature in next year's How to Hack Your Pat series, make sure you draw it nice and dark so that I can clearly see it and get it right as, as far as possible. Right. Any questions on the actual floor plans and how to do it? I'll zoom out for this last one. Just for you to again see the bigger drawing. So it's one page with a complete floor plan. At the bottom you have your name, title of the drawing, scale, and the date of completion, and your page number. Right. Any questions? This drawing, if it's done correctly, it's going to set you up for all your other drawings and your elevations. The one thing that I wanted to remind you on was the scale. So let's say, for instance, in your freehand concepts, you have a room. Okay, I'll just draw a quick room here. Let's say it's one of the smaller, smaller units. There's a window there. Um, okay, I forgot the door now. Okay, I'm going to draw all of that detail with the hatching. All right. Okay, so in your freehand concept, this is 6 meters, which is 6,000. And this one here is, say, for instance, 5,000, which gives me a total 30 square meters. Are you with me? Now you draw this to scale 1 to 75. How do you get to that scale? Help me out with the, someone with a calculator quickly. Who's got a calculator? Okay. So you're going to take, for instance, that 6,000. If you're using scale 1 to 75, you're going to divide that by 75. And that equals... Who's done the sum? 6,000 divided by 75? 80. So then your actual line that you're going to draw on that page is going to be 80 millimeters all right there it is 80 millimeters if it's drawn scale 1 to 75 so i take the 75 and i divide it by the measurement if i draw that same drawing and i'm drawing it the scale 1 to 100 oh sorry not a thousand 100 all right look at how much easier it is that i don't even have to make a make a um, calculation that's going to be 60 millimeters all right so you see the difference in size between 1 to 75 and 1 to 100. All right. So you'll have to go check. If you do 1 to 75 and your total, you know most now what's your total length and width of your conference center. Check that uh, total length. If it then 1 to 75 fits on your page, still with room enough to do the measurements, all by all means, do 1 to 75. But if there's not enough room so that you have a full full drawing plus space for your measurements you have to downscale it to 1 200 does that make sense to you 
Okay, so you have to make that decision before you start drawing. And that you'll only be able to do if you make a bit of a calculation for you. Good. All right. Okay, please check the community tab for a review of the drop-off area. How, example, you can draw that as well as your rotating doors with the two swinging doors. Is another example on that on the community tab. Right. Okay, thank you so much. Now it's your turn.